Well, this door has seen a few entries and exits over the years since 1913 when this part of the building was first opened, the second phase of Inverness Royal Academy as it was then. It was certainly the route by which I came into this building for the very first time as a first year pupil. Uh, and then as a 60 year pupil on my very last day left the building and again left in the last day that this school was part of Inverness Royal Academy as a teacher in 1979, again, out I went. An awful lot of comings and goings from that door, but my goodness, what a lot of history lies behind us here. That used to be the boys' toilet. I'm sure it no longer is. And, oh, look at this. This, this is just wonderful. This parquet flooring has been beautifully preserved. In fact, I think it's probably in far better condition now than it was when I, when I was a pupil. It was getting pretty mucky at that point, but somebody's made a great job of, uh, of restoring this. And uh, yeah, my goodness, uh, there have been an awful lot of changes, but it seems that they've been very well done. I want to talk about what used to lurk just to that side of the door. Um, Robert Priest uh, was a young teacher in the mid-1960s, and as such, he was peripatetic. He didn't have his own classroom. He had to, to wander around carrying much of his worldly goods with him. Um, and the rest were kept in that cupboard when he wandered from classroom to classroom. And the six-year boys would come along and they would turn the cupboard upside down. And he would open the cupboard and his worldly goods would fall out onto the, uh, uh, on, onto the parquet flooring. Um, but uh, yeah, the, there's been so much change, but yet it's still got that ambience that it had back in the mid 1960s when I first crossed the threshold. We actually don't have to go very far <clears throat> before we get to this panel of wall. It, it's long gone, but uh, what dominated here was a, a large mural of the electromagnetic spectrum in octaves, in other words, doubling rather than powers of 10. That was what made it, made it different. And uh, it had to be quite long as a result because you need far more octaves than you have powers of 10. But um, it went from radio at one end up to gamma rays at the other end. And uh, I actually found it quite intriguing. It was uh, part of the, the, the physics that we'd, we'd been doing, but uh, it was probably contemporary with the opening of the building in 1913. So it had been around for a while, but let's just, wander up again because I'm seeing differences here. I mean, for a start, there seem to be two doors here. And as I recollect, there's only one. The thing is, they've made such a good job of changing this end of the corridor. And the changes have been quite extensive that you know, even although I've had years of going in and out of this place, um, I'm having difficulty deciding what are the renovations and what the originals are. And I think that must be the renovated part. Uh, and that's the, the, the original door. But uh, yeah, they've made such a good job. And even further up here as well, because uh, yeah, there, there used to be a corridor going along here. It went along to the extension which was opened in 1960. Um, but which has been demolished to make room for the domestic accommodation that is now out, uh, outside there. And that corridor went along from round about here. And you can see out in the quad, you can see the new stonework where it's been blocked off. But um, from here, that corridor went down here and you would really never know. It's so difficult to, to see. It's really such, such a good job. And uh, yeah, this, this is completely different. But um, it's been so superbly crafted. Th this, for instance, used to be, um, this is room 20. This is the, the physics room in which uh, the Shinty legend John Willie Campbell taught and uh, also Ian McLean, otherwise known as Fred, who used to sit in the preparation room here, glowering at classes and uh, marking his jotters, looking at them through the door from the, the, the preparation room. And meanwhile, his mince and tatties would be sitting on a Bunsen, at least on a tripod stand with a pan on the tripod stand and a Bunsen burner under it. That if it was the period before lunch. And that was in the, the, the prep room, which was just in here. But my goodness, this is no longer a prep room. This has become a stairwell. Presumably this is a, an emergency exit because they didn't worry too much about these things. Um, in 1913, but uh, come the 2000s, uh, fire exits are all the more important. But that used to be the prep room, the door to Fred's room used to be there, the door through to the chemistry room, 19 used to be there. But uh, that, that's, that's major work there, major work.
this radiator, although I believe it may just have been a few feet back down there, in 1967, when we were in second year, I think it would have been, uh, we were all assembled here at uh, interval. And all of a sudden, a great spout of water shot out of this radiator. Somebody had managed to screw out off the nut, and the, the boiling hot water from the heating system shot into the corridor, and it wouldn't stop, and it wouldn't stop, and it wouldn't stop. And eventually, we were, well, not quite ankle deep in water, but it was getting in that uh, way, and uh, we had to be evacuated pretty quickly. But um, that, was, uh, that was a scandal. I don't think they ever got the culprit. Yeah, but uh, that, was some, that was some afternoon, or morning rather, and it took, it took some time to clean, to clean that up. Let's go upstairs. Ah, now, we've got to stop to look at this. Um, right here, and here, and here, we can just see the marks which used to house brass studs in this banister. Now, that was for the purpose of preventing people from sliding down the banister. Nobody with uh, any respect for the safety of their backside would dare slide down that with these great big brass studs. Clearly, the, the current occupants are trusted uh, not to slide down the banister. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's actually, again, like the parquet floor, been, 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 uh, it's been preserved very nicely. And it's the original metalwork as well. And the original steps. These steps, over 100 years old, and barely worn, although not without uh, traffic.